in the co-main event, man, this fight, so many things to talk about. Aljamain Sterling defended his Bantamweight title against TJ Dillashaw by TKO in the second round, the official time, 344 of round number two. Omar, let's start with you. Take us through your reactions of this fight, uh, the the uh, events that, that occurred with TJ's shoulder popping out, and also the interview afterwards, obviously, where he confessed to it popping out numerous times. Yeah. Uh, I have a couple different thoughts on this. The first one is it's really hard to take away anything significant from that fight because that shit happened almost immediately. Um, the other side of the coin is... I'm really happy that TJ got his ass beat because at some point karma was going to need to beat this going to need to bite that kid right in his ass. And, and I'm kind of glad we all got to see it a little bit. Didn't really mean anything. Who knows what that fight would have actually been if TJ had two working arms, especially from the ground, being able to post up and et cetera, et cetera. But I was content watching him get his face beat in. So Kind of like 50-50 on the fight a little bit. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> if you have heard me speak on this show, you know damn fucking well where I'm going to start with this fight. Fuck TJ Dillashaw. Fuck this guy. <laughs> he knows that he's a one arm fighter since fucking April and doesn't tell anyone. He takes a title shot that someone else could have had so he can go in there and have zero chance of winning. And you know who he fucking took the title shot from? Jose fucking Aldo, the guy that deserved it, the guy that should have had the title shot. I've said for a while now that Jose was the worst matchup for Aljamain Sterling in this division. Jose might have won the damn title, become a two-weight champion, added to his unreal legacy, and still be fighting right now as the bantamweight champion instead of being retired selling hamburgers. So I say again, fuck TJ Dillashaw. I'm not happy about this friggin' development. As for Aljo, I honestly feel bad for this man. Um, from the illegal knee to half the world pretending that he didn't beat Piotr Jan in the rematch to now having this win dismissed because of TJ's injury. He just can't seem to catch a break during this title run. And it's kind of taken the shine off of just how good he is. Like, let's not forget, he took TJ down nearly immediately before TJ's shoulder even came out. And, you know, what can he do? He did exactly what he should have done. He put it on TJ. He gets him out of there in two rounds, defends his belt, and he marches on to the next. So fuck TJ Dillashaw for what I said first. Fuck him for, for stealing some shine off of Aljo and fuck him for this whole scenario. And that is my theme of the week. That man can go away for all I care. I think he might be done, man. I mean, uh, for those who, who might not know, uh, in the post-fight interview in the Octagon, TJ Dillashaw confessed that he blew out his shoulder in camp in April and that from April to now his shoulder popped out and dislocated. He said maybe 20 times in camp, but he still took the fight and he didn't tell anybody because he, I guess he wanted the payday and he wanted the chance to have a puncher's chance to win the title. He said he didn't want to wait a a year. Cub Swanson said a month ago they were training and TJ couldn't even lift up his arm. Oh my God. Yeah. Like, and I'll tell you this, Mark, Mark is a gambler. So I don't think you picked this one for this. I don't think you picked TJ to win this fight. No, I bet on Aljo. But I Mark has brought up this part, uh, this point out. before, where oh, guys do this shit and fuck yep. up people's parlays and fuck up yep. people's money and all their picks because they go in it's a great you bet on one guy to be one way, and then you find out, oh, I've been fucked up for the last six months. I was never going to be that guy that you bet on. Great. Point. So it it, it being a huge TJ cool. fan. And I don't even mean someone with a lot of money, just someone like us. If you're a huge TJ fan, you're watching this, you're, and you're like, you know what? Fuck it. Like, I haven't made a big bet in a while. I'm going to throw $1,000 on, on TJ because I really think he's going to win. And then you find out he's fought, fighting with one arm 10 seconds into the, into the fight. Like, you want to jump out your window. Yeah. 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 I mean, I've always been a TJ fan of his fighting style. I, I regard TJ the way I regard Colby Covington. Like, not a fan of his antics, Colby, of, of his style of, of, like, trash talking. It's just annoying. But in the cage, I, I love watching that guy fight. I, I, I watch that guy, and I'm like, this guy's so good. I feel that way about TJ, man. Fucking blood oh, doping great. or not. Blood he's doping great. or not. You know, t- fucking whatever, however you do it, like, 
taking a syringe and taking out your own blood so that you can put it back in, doing that does not change the way he fights. And the way he fights, the way that Dwayne Ludwig has developed TJ's fighting and striking prowess, I love watching TJ strike. That being said, the guy clearly is a competitive asshole. Like, he's competitive to the point where it makes him into a giant, gaping asshole. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, I mean, even from his perspective, like, what do you think he was going to win? Right. Like, you know you're not going to win. In friggin' May, be like, hey, guys, I can't fight. Give this fight to Jose Aldo. I'm going to recover, and in the spring, I'll fight the winner. Like, how difficult is that? Yeah. And then Jose goes and just retires. He's like, I'm done. That's it. Yeah. We should clarify for Jose's sake that he owns a chain of burger spots. He is not selling hamburgers as you one may mean. have interpreted <laughs> that I wasn't grass to merch the man i meant he's focusing on his hamburger business you had a I, lot of feelings in that moment i just i just need to make sure people know i was assuming people knew he owned a hamburger yeah, chain which obviously most people probably don't so, yeah, you know. fair. okay fair. Fair. <laughs> yes but dude, I, I also I, I also agree with you i think that he would have been a very interesting match uh jose would have been a very interesting matchup for uh, uh aljamain sterling oh it would have been incredible that being said, uh, I really do think that we may have seen the last of TJ Dillashaw in the UFC, or maybe in fighting overall. Because I don't I, to to say that you've dislocated your shoulder twenty times over the past four months or six months or whatever. I, how do you come back from that ever? Ever? Well, he's he's gonna need to get his shoulder repaired. The problem yeah. is he let it go on for he let it go on for so long. It's not like he got surgery in the middle of the camp. He yeah. just he just let it be. He's got to go. He's got to get it repaired at this point. He's got to get it surgically repaired. Probably Even very that. similar to, to what um, – what's his Pico. name? Yeah, he, he, he should fight Pico. That's what he should do. And both use Brian one Ortega. arm and see who's, see who's now, better. Now, hold player. on. Now, that's an interesting angle because both <laughs> T.J. Dillashaw and Aaron Pico both train with the same, I think, strength and conditioning guy, Sam Calvito. Really? Wow. And they both tore their shoulders out like weeks apart. Supposedly, Pico has had this issue for a long time, though. Okay. Like his whole career. It could be just a, a, a huge that. coincidence, but very strange. Yeah. Mike's very strange. ready to nail Sam Calavito to the yeah, wall yeah. right now. <laughs> uh, okay. So, talking about where these guys go from here, that's my take on where TJ goes from here. But let's talk about Aljo. What's next for the Bantamway title? Who do you think uh, deserves the next shot, I guess? Uh, Omar, give me, uh, give me a name at, at 135 pounds. So I believe there's already a little bit of uh, things in the work for Aljo. Obviously, they were talking about Jan and the winner of Jan O'Malley getting the next title shot against uh, Sterling. That seems to be potentially a backup, maybe if this doesn't come through. But right now, they are looking at Aljamain Sterling versus Henry Cejudo. And they are looking to do that uh, in Australia in February. Wow, as, as the co-main under Vulcan Islam. Yep. Aljo would co-main to Islam again. Uh, yeah, it seems like that's the rumor. I think it's wild to take a guy who hasn't fought in two and a half years and throw him right into a title shot. Like, I get it. He's Henry Cejudo, but, like, we couldn't have him win a fight first, especially at Bantamweight where he's fought, like, twice, I think. So, not my favorite choice. Um, to me, this title shot should be going to Cheeto Vera right now. Um you know, as I said, Henry hasn't fought in ages. O'Malley won controversially. O'Malley's lone career loss is to Cheeto Vera, who is the other top contender at the moment. To me, that should all add up to him getting the title shot. I, I think it should be Aljo and Cheeto. But I guess we're getting Aljo and Henry. Um, it's going to be the first guy who could really test Aljo's wrestling in a way that we haven't seen. We will see if a three-inch height advantage and seven-inch reach advantage for Aljo and a generally larger body in every way will be able to overcome a uh, Olympic caliber wrestling when it comes to the wrestling department. So we'll see. But, uh, yeah, it sounds like that's where we're headed. Yeah, man. I mean... So Hudo hasn't been doing much these past couple of years. I know that he's been doing color commentary for a couple of organizations. I know he's been doing color for Eagle, I think. But uh, training-wise, we'll see what kind of shape he gets in. 
to to Cejudo's credit, the man has actually, for the first time in his life, actually been living his life. So give him a little bit of credit on that side because the man has been a professional athlete since he was like five. It's true. And has been like wrestling nonstop, did the Olympics and the whole (laughs) bit, did the UFC right after the Olympics. It seems like he didn't even really have a real relationship until he was like 30. And then like now has a real girlfriend. I think baby now? Baby. Yeah, he's a kid. Yeah, yeah. Look, he took, as soon as he got retired, he like crunched in an entire like five, six years of life into like two or three years. Um, and I think he's just gotten to the point now where, you know, he's gotten that part, I think, that was missing in his life fulfilled. And I think he sees opportunities. It, it would be hard for me to think that if I'm not Henry Cejudo and I'm not feeling myself like I would imagine he does, looking at Aljamain Sterling and being like, I can beat the shit out of that guy. And watching just fight after fight of guys that I feel like he thinks that he's better than them and just like – I. I can't just sit here and just let these guys think that they're better than me or me not prove that I'm not better than them. So I think it's just his competitive nature is at work. He's still at an age now where he can perform, I think, at the peak of his ability. I think it'd be dumb to wait any longer than he's already has. So I, I, I'm i down. I'm very interested to see what's been going on because Henry Cejudo hasn't been out of the gym. And That's fact, I, would, say. I would argue that what he's been doing lately with coaching people and kind of breaking down other people's games and, and, and opponents, fighters games, it's made him better. Um, his fight IQ in his, at the end of his uh, recent UFC run, I think was some of the best fight IQ we've seen out of the champions in recent memory. Um, so I would only imagine that's gone up since then. And, and I'm interested to see if he's actually gotten better over this stretch of time. Yeah. It seems like he's got a great mind for the sport like every single guy that goes and trains at fight ready in, in scottsdale basically says the same thing of how impressed they are with with his mind for the, for the game so That's good. as you said it's not like he's been away it's just that it's been a minute since he fought yeah yeah 